Hey everyone, welcome back! Duviri has arrived, and I've been super busy the last few days. Now we're finally taking a look at the new Drifter melees, as well as how they handle in a Warframe's hands. Today's melee is Eden. I actually like this one quite a bit for my Drifter, as it is faster, smooth, and has good hitboxes. That's honestly all there is to say about it. Since the melees are rather similar in damage output in your Drifter's hands, the most important part is which ones feel smooth and good to use. Now, I wouldn't say any of the new Drifter melees are particularly bad for him, but the Sun and Moon, I would say, probably feels the worst. The Hammer one, or the Heavy Blade, is extremely fun. So I'd also recommend trying that one out. Anyways, today's melee is Eden. There's quite a lot to unpack here, so stay tuned. I chose Eden first because it's a polearm. Polearms are known for their stellar freedom of movement in the Shimmering Blight stance, as well as strong stance multipliers. They also have very generous hitboxes. It's no wonder that Guandao Prime and Orthos Prime remain relevant, despite the weapons themselves only being slightly impressive. It's basically a reskin to Guandao Prime. Whereas Orthos Prime was known as the faster, status weighted Guandao, Eden is literally Guandao with a tiny bit more crit and a little less slash weight. I can tell you right now, the Guandao Prime is a better polearm for a crit based slash melee. This is because the tiny crit advantage that Eden has does not make up for a dropping from 70 to 50% slash weight. On top of this, Eden has 220 base damage instead of Guandao's 240. I'm not going to bother to run the actual calc since polearms are busted anyways, and despite being weaker, both will still take you well past base steel path and into endurance easily. But if you want to know the absolute comparison, yes, Guandao Prime will always outdamage Eden by a little bit. The small extra crit chance Eden has also does not let it hit any new crit breakpoints that Guandao cannot reach. The Eden also has a gimmick. The heavy attack throws the weapon like Javelin instead of a normal heavy swing. If you want the actual heavy swing, you will have to slide heavy. But that's not what you're watching this video for today, right? So the throw. The actual throw does almost 4 times the damage of the explosion. This is very important, do remember this. It also does much more damage than swinging the melee like an ordinary weapon. It also does not throw straight. You need to aim slightly to the left of where you actually want it to hit, and it has a heavy arc after 15 to 20 meters. I don't know how big the AoE is, but it is larger than 5 meters, and at 5 meters away, there is already 50% damage fall off. It does not have multiplicative condition overload like the Korofel Shant does. It's additive and has proper full CO scaling. No lost damage, but no funky bonus damage out of nowhere either. It actually works as intended, surprisingly, but the throw consists of the direct hit and an explosion. The explosion completely ignores condition overload. This means no big PP AOE DPS. The Eden throw functions a lot like an arrow, where the polearm will drag dead bodies behind it and continue to punch through enemies until it reaches one it cannot kill on hit. There is a very important bug associated with this interaction. Normally the Eden explodes one second after it embeds into either a surface or an enemy. If you kill an enemy with the throw, the polearm continues flying. It fails to explode until 10 seconds later. This means that if your polearm throw does too much damage and kills everything it touches, it will not explode properly. If you throw it at the ground intentionally, it always explodes, but you lose the contact damage and fall off. And the AoE also does nearly 4 times less damage than the hits. The only way to throw the polearm into enemies and detonate is if your polearm is weak enough that it doesn't kill them on hit. But if they don't die on hit, the AoE that's 4 times weaker is also highly unlikely to kill anything around them either. Of course, if you intentionally throw a tanky unit so they don't die and thus the AoE nukes fodder, then it works flawlessly. But who wants to play like that? This makes the weapon unsuitable for AoE clearing when enemies have armor on Steel Path. The scaling isn't that high on the hit, and the AoE is nearly 4 times weaker. As expected, the AoE also cannot headshot. There is also another issue with the Eden. This isn't so much a bug, but rather a way on how throwables work. It's probably an oversight since we've never had a throwable polearm before. When you heavy attack with polearms, the heavy animation completes early and causes the combo to wipe. The combo wipe window was not adjusted to account for Eden's longer windup and delayed explosion window, causing your combo multiplier to frequently wipe before the AoE occurs. Throw from far enough away, and it will wipe before Eden itself makes contact with an enemy. Why is this bad? Because Eden calculates Blood Rush, Weeping Wounds, and Gladiator stacks at the moment of damage application. This means it is impossible for the explosion to benefit from pre-throw combo state of Blood Rush, Gladiator, and Weeping Wounds. And the direct hit can only benefit from the pre-throw combo state if the enemy is close enough. 
Therefore, the only throw build options are a 2x heavy armor strip, since damage is so low, or a 12x build that absolutely has to use 90% heavy efficiency. Yes, throwing this weapon makes you lose Blood Rush, Gladiator, and Weeping Wound stacks before it applies damage. DE, please fix this. Just make the combo wipe on Eden a full 2 seconds after you start the throw. You can't even throw it faster than that anyways. Alright, let's get into the builds. I'm going to be showcasing throw builds first, since that's what we've spent the entire past several minutes discussing. First up is the Armor Strip 2x build. The Eden is weak enough that a 2x build will never kill anything with AoE on Steel Path if they have armor. This is the prerequisite to using this build and the reason we're using Viral Damage. Condition Overload is optional, I would actually recommend Prime Pressure Point, because Condition Overload, like I said, does not work on the AoE. Keep in mind, going double sacrificial will cost one extra forma, but sac set will also boost sac steel up, so you're above 200% crit chance on heavy throws, meaning every throw and explosion will be guaranteed oranges. Without double sacrificial set, you're under 200% and risk getting the rare yellow here and there. Amalgam Organ Shatter is very important to speed up the throw, and you might even want to consider Killing Blow over the CO slot if you don't want to prime. Because it cuts down the 1 up to just 0.5 seconds, it is noticeable, the arsenal is rounding down to 0.6 seconds and rounding up to 0.5 seconds. In mission, it uses the unrounded value. You just go around chucking it at enemies, grouping would also work even better, but understandably, only so many frames can group in full strip. Alternatively, Megas Anomaly is an option, but that is also not everybody's cup of tea. I would also recommend throwing this near enemy feet instead of into them because it often one-shots them full strip and results in the non-explosion bug I discussed earlier. The second throw build is a 12x setup. You can kill Trash Fodder without stripping on base steel path with this, just make sure it's corrosive. If you're using it to kill Acolytes or Demolis and full strip, obviously make sure to mod Viral instead, because 12x combo can take a while to build up, sources of grouping help a lot with this. Arcane Strike is also immensely useful since we have zero attack speed mods on the build. This is because we're forced to build for 90% efficiency to get around the combo wipe bug I explained in the timestamp above. Otherwise, your explosion definitely will not benefit from your combo, and your direct hit might also not benefit from combo. It would also screw you over from benefiting from Blood Rush. Alternatively, you can run Gladiator Might in the slot as it does result in slightly higher damage, but you will lose your pretty red crits. This build is also easy to use after you build combo. I would strongly recommend Neramon Focus School for this, combined with Dexterity Arcanes on your pistol and primary to extend combo duration to 20 seconds. Group or whack enemies to build combo to 12x. Chuck and throw and watch everything die. If it's a Demolis or Acolyte, aim at the head. This thing does headshot and get the 3x multiplier. For a basic light spam build, it is a polearm. Polearms are not strong enough to go raw corrosive and steel path unless you buff them out their ass. If you're not bringing Eclipse, Roar, Vex Armor, etc., or Armor Strip, which would obviously go viral instead, but a base generic any frame Eden light attack build, you go slash. Shimmering Blight gets headshots and has wide horizontal sweeps, so this is an amazing stance with good multipliers as well. It's the typical one of everything build. We have one base damage, one for range, one bane for double dip bleeds for 2.4 times more damage, one blood rush for crit scaling, one beeping wounds for status scaling, one attack speed, one crit damage mod, and a flex. Which is currently Gladiator Might for even more crit damage and a tad crit chance. You could swap this for Karnas Mandible instead for more slash procs in exchange of less damage. This is an option because the Eden is only 50% slash weight. Remember, that weapons in the 40-60% to slash weight category are primed candidates for Karnas Mandible to enable much more slash procs. We reach 65.5% slash weight this way, or 31% more slash procs per second. Super easy to use, you spray your primer, spam neutral melee, and profit. It's a bit unfortunate that the gimmick on Eden turned out this way. It would be a much stronger competitor if I had multiplicative CO on the throw, but even that is unnecessary. What really needs fixes are the explosion delay buck and the combo wipe issue. If they extend the combo wipe on Eden to 2 seconds after the animation starts, this is enough to ensure the throw always benefits from intended blood rush, weeping, and gladiator stacks when it hits and explodes. The explosion delay bug caused by killing an enemy on contact and then embedding Eden into a surface is also very problematic and severely impacts the ease of use of this weapon. If you have too much damage, you're forced to aim at the floor or walls and miss on purpose to kill trash fodder in AoE. It is a good Demolis and Acolyte killer though, but it is still much weaker than a Corophel, Gunblade, or Exodia Contagion that would be used much in the same way. 
Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always, as soon as possible. Like I've been doing with the Duviri update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.